Welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. We continue with our effort to provide you more questions to practice for your medical care and medical care refresher exit exam. Hope you have watched our earlier video which had the questions from set 1. If someone suffers a heart attack and stops breathing, you should immediately give a stimulant by force if required. Make the victim comfortable in a bunk. Immediately start CPR or administer oxygen. Now in such a case of uh, heart attack and uh, breathing issues, the immediate action should be to start the CPR. So answer is C. Anaphylaxis is treated with analgesic tablet, a tablet under the tongue, EpiPen injection of adrenaline and insulin injection. Anaphylaxis is basically severe allergic uh, reaction. It's treated with EpiPen injection of adrenaline. The so answer is C. To treat a person from heat exhaustion, you should administer artificial respiration, put him in a tub of ice water, Give him sips of cool water or cover him with light cloth. The answer is C. Give him sips of cool water. A comminuted fracture is one where the bone has broken into pieces which are floating. Broken only where one part of the bone is fractured. Broken cleanly with each end attached or broken and is affecting muscles and nerves. A comminuted fracture is wherein the broken, the bone is broken into pieces which are floating. Answer is hence A. The stimulant used for an unconscious person is tea, coffee, whiskey and water or ammonia inhalant. The answer is D, it's ammonia inhalant. In order to initiate CPR on a drowning victim, start chest compression before the victim is removed from water. Drain water from the lungs before ventilating. Begin mouth to mouth respiration. Do not tilt the head back as it may induce vomiting. The correct answer is C, begin mouth to mouth respiration heat stroke affects the body's vital organs except brain heart kidney or the bones now in case of a heat stroke brain heart and kidney are all affected so the answer is d the bones which are not affected by the heat stroke you are alone and administering CPR to an adult victim. How many chest compressions and how many inflations should you administer? 15 compressions and 2 inflations. 15 compressions, then 4 inflations. 30 compressions, then 2 inflations. Or 30 compressions, then 4 inflations. The answer is C, 30 compressions and 2 inflations. Some people are very allergic to insect bites and stings. This condition is called as septic shock, cardiac arrest, toxic shock syndrome or anaphylactic shock. The answer is D, anaphylactic shock. When performing abdominal thrusts, how many thrusts do you give? 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 15 to 20 thrusts or 30 to 40 thrusts. When performing abdominal thrusts, you give 6 to 10 thrusts. So the answer is B, 6 to 10 thrusts. If a person is choking, you should do nothing as long as the person is coughing, 
is still conscious face has not turned blue or none of the above now you should wait wait for any action until the person stops coughing so the answer is a you should do nothing as long as the person is coughing before giving cpr you should first make sure the victim is not bleeding is conscious or unconscious is not vomiting is not dead what you must make sure before you administer cpr is whether the victim is conscious or unconscious so answer is b in this case the objective of first aid is to diagnose the injuries and condition to determine priorities to give immediate treatment to shift the patient to hospital i'm sure all of us would agree that the objective of first aid is to give immediate treatment so answer is c which of the below is not a symptom of hypothermia stumbling amnesia anemia hallucination the answer is c it's anemia which is related to the blood condition and therefore the answer in this case is c what would you do for a victim who has internal bleeding keep the victim quiet and lying down bend the knees to make the victim comfortable both a and b or none of the above answer is c both a and b would be the actions required in case a victim is suffering from internal bleeding when carrying for a choking infant what position is the infant held in upside down by the ankles and shoulders face up on a flat surface face down on your forearm with head lower than the body face down on your knee with head lower than the body the answer i'm sure you'll agree would be c it's face down on the forearm with head lower than the body as you can see in this picture out here this is the position in which the infant has to be held if the infant is suffering from choking a crew member goes into diabetic shock what do you do ask radio medical advice ask him where his insulin is and give him a shot do not give him food or drink make him comfortable give him a non diet drink candy or something with sugar so in case of a diabetic patient crew member who is suffering from diabetic shock the action shall be as in d make him comfortable give him a non diet drink a candy or something with sugar which of the following signs may go away please uh, be very careful about the question which of the following signs may go away as the hypothermia worsens slurred speech confusion shivering or unconsciousness now as hypothermia worsens it's the shivering which may disappear so the answer is c a victim is coughing up blood with bleeding from mouth and is tender in abdomen pulse is weak and rapid victim is having signs of massive head injuries internal bleeding drug overdose or possible poisoning now if the victim is coughing up blood bleeding from mouth tender in abdomen pulse is weak and rapid these are all indicators of internal bleeding so the answer is b wounds that may require stitches are over an inch long bleeding from an artery or uncontrolled bleeding human or animal bites 
all of the above. I'm sure we'll all agree that all these wounds could lead to profuse bleeding and hence would invite stitching. So answer would be D, all of the above. Snake bites can be very serious when caring for snake bite victim on a timber carrier. Which of the below should you not do? Should you not do? Wash wounds, apply ice, keep bitten parts still and below the heart, get radio med medical advice. Of all these, you should do everything else but applying ice. So the answer is B, apply ice. I would again reiterate, please be very, very careful when you read the question. If a crew member has a head injury, it's possible the crew has had a concussion. True or false? Well, every head injury entails a risk of concussion. So answer is A, it's true. When caring for a victim with bloody nose, you would not, what would you not do? Please be careful. Apply an ice pack to the bridge of the nose. Apply pressure to upper lip just beneath the nose. Have the victim sit with head tilted backwards while pinching the nostrils together. Or have the victim sit with head tilted forward while pinching the nostrils together. What you should not do is C, have the victim sit with head tilted backwards and pinch the nostrils together. So what you need not do is the action C, A, B and D could all be the actions that may be warranted. When caring for a victim who has an object impaled in their hand, you should remove the object flush with cool water and transport to hospital. Immobilize the object by placing several dressings around it. Break object off where it sticks out and bandage the injury or none of the above. Correct action shall be as in B. Immobilize the object by placing several dressings around it and obviously if circumstances permit, send the patient to the hospital. Which of the below is not a symptom of shock? Strong thirst, nausea or vomiting, chest or abdominal pain, breathing difficulty, restless or irritability, rapid breathing or rapid pulse. Now what is not a symptom of shock out of these is B, that is chest or abdominal pain or breathing difficulty. Other than that, strong thirst, nausea, vomiting, restlessness, irritability, rapid breathing or rapid pulse rate are all symptoms of shock. You have a casualty who has recently banged their head against a filing cabinet. They feel sick, giddy and have a headache. What might be wrong with them? They are drunk, they may be suffering from concussion, they may be suffering from a stroke or they may be poisoned by food. It's a case of head injury which could be a good cause for concussion. So answer is B, they may be suffering from concussion. Signals of head and spine injuries are blood or other fluids in ears or nose, unusual bumps or depressions on the head or over the spine, has seizures, severe headaches or slurred speech, both A and B. The answer in this case is obviously A and B, blood or fluids in ears or nose, unusual bumps on the head or depressions on spine are all indicators of head or spine injuries. You should ask the crew if he or she is okay before performing CPR. Is it true? Is it false? 
all of the above, none of the above. The answer is A, it's true. You should check with the crew if the patient is okay before you administer CPR. A crew member has a severe cut in the groin area. What do you do? Cover the wound with sterile dressing, applying direct pressure. Elevate the feet, apply a sterile dressing on the wound, apply pressure on the groin area. Wash with cold water. Cover wound with sterile dressing and apply pressure to the femoral artery. The correct action in this case would be A. Cover the wound with sterile dressing and apply direct pressure onto the wound. Shock is a condition where the respiratory system fails to deliver air to the lungs. The cardiovascular system fails to deliver blood to the heart. The circulatory system fails to deliver blood to all parts of the body. All of the above. Now, a patient goes into shock when all parts of the body, body fail to receive blood. So the answer is C, it's the failure of the circulatory system to deliver blood to all parts of the body that leads to a condition of shock. Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. We hope that you find uh, this practice uh, set uh, useful for your exit exams. Uh, if you can help us and help other fellow seafarers, Please do share some questions from your experience of the exit exam when you take it. We shall try and include them in our subsequent releases. Please do subscribe to our channel so that you can get automatic uh, notification of our future releases. If you have any feedback, feel free to write to us on marinegurukul at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. Good luck for your exams.